So I'm not an ultra runner. Oh, cramp. This is the hardest thing in the world. Oh, just bloody get on with it. Ah! I'm absolutely exhausted. Come on. 42.86. Six hours 31. On the 31st of August, 2020, I took the plunge and I signed up for the Trail Outlaws St. Cuthbert's Ultra, which is 45 miles. The Ultra starts in the Scottish border town of Melrose and it tracks the trail across 2,150 meters worth of elevation to the small market town of Wooler in Northumberland. So Melrose is 40 kilometers that way, Wooler is 35 kilometers that way, and all those hills in the background are all getting run over. And I want to make one thing absolutely clear I am not an ultramarathoner. I almost feel a sense of imposter syndrome even discussing an ultramarathon. This is what happened. And before I knew it, it was New Year's Day. I chose January to kickstart the training. That gave me a six month stretch until the race. What I didn't anticipate in January was it was gonna snow a lot. And running in the snow isn't quite as fun as it looks. It's actually a lot harder than it looks. However, motivation was strong and that didn't stop me. 175 kilometers, a couple of half marathons was the perfect start to the training. As the sun arrived in February, I debuted my pale, weak legs. Just as Forrest Gump did across America, I took inspiration and ran all over the northeast of England, from the coastlines to the national parks and trails. Another 170 kilometers back, with my farthest run being 25k in just under 2 hours 20. At this point, I hadn't given too much thought into the actual race itself. I wasn't being flippant, I was just focused on getting time on my feet. I certainly hadn't considered the 2,000 meter elevation, and this led nicely into March, where I decided to push myself as far as I ever had. And by doing so, I did something rather stupid. Heroic, but mainly stupid. okay on. They just seem so much tougher, I don't know why. I don't know if they're a bit steeper or a bit of an eye opener for the ultra. I'm gonna have to do a lot more hill training. Like a lot more. Whilst the Yorkshire Free Peaks was the highlight of March, my training had also increased to 190 kilometers for the month. Confidence was sky high running into the Free Peaks, although I quickly learned confidence leaves you as quickly as it finds you. What I mean by that is, the Free Peaks absolutely kicked my ass. I don't know if my uh, eyes are playing tricks on me or not, but at the top of that looks like snow. And it's the 20 something of March. Wow. You can see the first peak that came up. And that's the third. Second is, I'll show you in a minute. What is going on? Ah! 
Likes, man. I honestly don't know how I'm going to do this ultra. I'm like, I'm not even halfway of what the ultra would be. I just, I cannot believe the pain. It's unbelievable. Really, really unbelievable. Coming round to the car now. Serious doubts on the ultra, like really, really serious doubts. I'm here at Kielder and in 2019 I ran the marathon and I did it in four hours 37. I reckon I've got every chance of beating what I did in 2019. So four hours 37, that's the time to beat. Hey, listen up, I've tried to tell you this a hundred times. Not getting better by lying there, pretending to cry. You all repeat, you can see shit cause you have closed your eyes. You say you listen, but you're missing what it's all about. We have just hit 10 kilometers. The time's about 54 minutes, which I'm sure is about two minutes slower. Fifteen kilometers there. I'm on about one hour twenty-five I think. Look at the scenery. Just about to pass 30 kilometers now, and I am struggling. I'm on two hours, 50 minutes. Got 11 kilometers left. If anyone needs to pick me up, that view is going to do it. Compared to last time, it was pouring down. I was stop, start, stop, start. Not today. Not today. We're going to do this. Come on. 5k left. And I am struggling. 2.2k left. Just get on with it. Just bloody get on with it. 2019, I finished in 4 hours 37. And I've just finished now in 4 hours 15. I'm absolutely buzzing to knock off 22 minutes, but I feel horrendous. That was one of the coolest things. I have ever done. Ever. So Sean Conway, a uh, endurance athlete. Non-professional ultra-endurance athlete. <laughs> Something like that. Basically I'm doing what the groupies did in Forrest Gump. He's running his challenge and I've tagged along for a bit. First ultra in six weeks time. Get it for me. What's most likely to go wrong? Uh, you probably under eat. So that's probably the bit where you feel you've maybe not trained enough or you're not fit enough. I would say it's probably nutrition. For me, there's five pistons of endurance. Food, water, sleep, muscle management, and motivation. I had to plan my Northumberland route three times I kept going into military firing zones without realizing it. So today we're running just on the edge. Oh, it's steep. Come from all the way down there. A thousand meters of climbing in this mountain. Whew. So food, eat a lot, a little and often. Find food that works for you and just eat. Water, hydration, you know. Most people probably need more salt in their diet than they realize. Yeah. So I definitely, you know, play around with salt strategies. You know, in the lead up, drink loads of water. And if you're still thirsty, or just going to the loo a lot, you probably need to increase your salt. So look into that. Sleep, 
you know, try and get good sleep for a couple of days before. It's called sleep banking. It is, you know, if you can have 15 hours for two days in a row, it's hard to do, but with busy lives, but that would help. I'll show that to the wife on yeah. at least three weeks worth before. <laughs> <laughs> you know, motivation, what's motivating you? Keep that at the forefront of your mind. Dangle that as a carrot whenever you whenever you're knackered. And uh, muscle management. Go for a massage before, definitely if you can. Yeah. Uh, do a good stretching session. Uh, and poignantly, walk the hills. Honestly. Oh, that's another one. If at the beginning you think you're going a good pace, yeah, or the right pace, you're going too quickly. Oh, really? 100%. Uh, if you're going too slowly, you're probably still going too quickly. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I wouldn't try and bank miles early. Yeah. Personally, on a first ultra, I would look at a time that you think you want to do, work out the minutes per mile, and just plot at that pace. Right. And if at the end you're feeling better, then maybe you can build on it. Because you know, if you go out too quickly, you're just going to burn through. But yeah, those would be my tips. Thanks, sir. Smash it. Cheers, man. No worries. But we're pretty much there, and by all accounts, there's an obligatory dip in a waterfall, which will be, uh, which will be a good laugh. Oh. Marathon done, over a thousand meters elevation, 42.77, got a little way to the car. Oh, unbelievable experience. Something that I didn't really expect was how difficult it is to get motivated. Having to run and run and run four or five times a week. And this should be the point where my training's at, at its peak. But I'm finding it quite difficult to get myself motivated and do that extra run or go that extra distance. Particularly with the distances mounting up after the three peaks, after killed a marathon in a short space of time, you feel like you've earned a break from training, but actually that is just part of the training. It's quite surreal, really. Just gotta get on with it. There's loads of stuff I'm not prepared for. So I need to buy a bag. I've never run with a bag. I need to buy the kit list to go in the bag. Nutrition wise, I've, I've not got a plan. I know what I need to do, but I've never really done it before and I've not practiced it. Hydration, got no plan there. Don't have anywhere booked for before the race. The guy I'm doing the race with, Mark, he's injured. So I could be doing it on my own. I don't know the route particularly well. I'm, uh, I think I need to start taking this a little bit more seriously you need all the smaller pieces to fit into place which I don't think I've been very good with we are three days away from the race now it's finally brightened up a little bit it's been absolutely pouring down for the last few days the forecast actually looks okay it looks dry at least but I'm just hoping that it just doesn't rain. It's gonna be boggy underfoot, but that's all right. It's just another hurdle, but I really, really hope it doesn't rain. It's quite a strange feeling knowing everything that I've put into this for hundreds, thousands of kilometers of running, and it all comes down to Saturday. All the runs in the snow, all of the runs in the rain, the wind, before work, after work, during work, when I've not felt like it, when I've been hung over, all of those times where I've not wanted to go but I've chosen to do it and I've pushed myself to do it, now it all comes down to this.
Less than 2k in and look at where we've come from right down there in the valley oh, what a brutal start this is more like it this is what we signed up for much more like it so I woke up at 4am Airbnb host Carol um, dropped me off at the start line which was unbelievable if you happen to watch this massive massive thank you i tell you something i was so nervous this morning i could hardly eat i felt sick but uh that nervous energy's gone at least less than 5k in we already took the wrong turn added on about quarter of a mile exactly what i didn't want to happen but never mind rule number one don't follow the person in front of you Closing in on eight kilometers, so by my uh, calculation, the good news is we're about 10% of the race through. The bad news is we're about 10% of the race through. Just coming up to uh, 10K, I find myself in an interesting spot where I'm desperate for a piss but there's a group in front who are really good with the map so it's a balancing act between not losing those guys and uh, pissing myself so we're just past the 15k max so 20% of the race done feeling good checkpoint number one we've made it we have made it, I think. Got a checkpoint. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. That felt good getting the first checkpoint out of the way. Refilled the drink. And uh, on my way, I didn't stop long at all, probably a minute or two, and then just carried on the trails. Headed into like a kind of grassy farmland. I promised myself in all my training that I wouldn't congratulate myself on getting to half marathon. Stick to 25k because that's a third of the way through, but here we are at the half marathon point. Two hours 30 gone. I imagine this is where it gets a bit tricky on, but it's a bit. Made it to another checkpoint. For those that won't believe me, I'm at another checkpoint. So we're just following on from where I kicked off the race when I announced it. Melrose. 29k in. 40 that way. It's difficult. I'm just so proud that I'm even giving this a go. Whatever happens. 10k until I see the support crew. Looking forward to seeing some friendly faces to be honest. My inner knee's hurting. Ooh, nettles are stinging. 34k in. My left knee is starting to hurt quite a lot. I think I can see the checkpoint. 41.28 kilometers in. I'm really, really aching. Just get to the checkpoint. It's gonna be so good to see everybody. The pain is so intense right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's insane. <laughs> what's, what's so insane? Right, so my ankles are alright. Yeah. My left knee's hurting. My right knee's fine. They're tightening up. They're tightening up. But I guess yeah, that's normal. My left knee's fine. Three big hills left from about 10k. Apart. Are you at Well, I'm at like second. Yeah, 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 yeah that's it. Only since you've stopped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I had a Jaffa cake at the last aid station. Yeah? You just had a Jesus Creed with you? That no, was the best thing I've ever had. Oh, uh -huh. well, do you want something? I've got, got chocolate bars, I've got all sorts of you know. We're at 43.5k now. Every kilometre from here on is history for me. I've never ran this far before. I just need to keep going, keep going. Just don't let all the negatives creep in. Just, just get this done. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but the person there following those trees and then up that grassy bank there, right up to the top. The hills are just insane. Wide open hill, highest point in the world. <laughs> <laughs> well done. done. Thank you, mate. That's awesome. Thanks. Thanks. Come on, just bashed my way through 50k. What a milestone. Seven hours, 18 minutes or something. Come on. I can see the race crew. I can see the race crew. Don't cry. Don't cry. Do not cry. Do not cry. <laughs> race, crew. race crew! Race crew! Race crew! How are you getting on, Chris? Yeah, I'm alright. I'm alright, it's just. It is really, really difficult. <laughs> I think we're off of that next. No way! Yeah, honestly, I think we're off of that. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's about <laughs> half of the last one. That's like 260 or something meters. That was 450. But you've only got 20k to go now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you could do that. i do, do that. I'll be, I'll be back by an hour. <laughs> 55 kilometers. Big milestone because that is the distance of the ultra that I was toying about signing up for, but I couldn't because the date clashed with my mate Graham's wedding. So, I uh, couldn't do it. So that is 55k, so that is that ultra done in my eyes. It's times like these, it makes you wonder why you're doing things. Why did I sign up for this? Why am I putting myself through it? You know, motivation, what's motivating you? Is that the forefront of your mind? I honestly don't know. I found a second wind. We're closing in on 60k. It's not quick, it's not pretty. But I'm feeling surprisingly alright. I've got an addictive personality. I always want to push what's possible. This will be the greatest thing I've ever done in my entire life. The first free aid stations, I was all smiles and jokes. I'm not laughing now. Our scenery, unreal. What a mad view. Just clocked past 60k. What is going on? This is unbelievable. I just can't get my head around what's going on today. Final crew stop. Hey, here he is, champion. The time I see him next, I should be an ultra runner. A one time. Ultra runner. We'll edit this. Everybody shout first place, come on. <laughs> Here he is. Do you need some? What's happening with that ice pack? Uh, a little problem. How far you got left, Chris? I'm not sure, but I feel brand new. <laughs> got 12.8k to go, just up that hill. <laughs> Just seen the support crew there. They told us it's not 16k left, it's 13k. Bloody come on! Just muddle my way through now. Literally just crawl. Is that a wrong turn? Just crawl my way, whatever. Bloody come on! See these two fellas, it follows round up and along that track through the top of that hill there 
65k done. Oh, through the middle of, through the middle of them. Just trying to compute how much I've put into the training for this. 20 half marathons, five or six marathons. All because I wanted to be able to say that I could run an ultra. It's been an amazing day, but my God, is it so much more difficult than I anticipated. My knees goosed, my quads are on fire, the hills are insane. But what an experience. And it's not just the finish line, it's everything that goes with it, the dedication and I hadn't drank for two months, which is a big deal. 70 kilometers done. Something like this can change your life. <laughs> That village down there, I think that's Wooler. The hell is nearly over. Please be Wooler. So I've got down, steep downhill, one more uphill, steep downhill, done. Imagine if England win the Euros tomorrow. Is this the perfect weekend? Oh, I can't handle it. I can't even handle the thought of it. Come on! It could be meant to be, you know. Oh my god. It could actually be meant to be. 70.99. 71 kilometers. All of the hard work's gonna pay off. Yes! Come on! I cannot believe I'm gonna do this. Last little bit. Hobble the last little bit. I've run this bit before. I am here. Come on! Damn you. Damn you, St. Cuthbert. Little hedgy. I think we're coming in now. I think we're coming in now. Come on. Come on. Oh my days. Much further? <laughs> I think we're there. Still go left? This has got to be it, right? That has to be the finish line. Oh my god. Oh my god. I think this is it. Oh my god. Oh my days. I've already done it. Come on. Come on. Oh. There you go, fantastic. Oh. Oh. Just take your time. Yeah, I'm alright, you alright? Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh, I need to sit down. 